during the DARPA subterranean challenge where we had to deploy a team of robots to go into unknown underground environments, we had to develop a solution to allow the robots to navigate beyond communication range in unknown GPS denied environments. And uh, that was the motivation for us to develop this multi-agent, multi-robot navigation stack. When we started this competition three years ago, uh, I don't believe there was anything out there that would solve the challenge. What powers our solution is our SLAM solution, uh, which we call Wildcat. Our navigation stack sits downstream from our SLAM system and the SLAM system gives us a really accurate maps of an unknown environment and also gives the robots location on that map. This information is fed into the navigation stack where we use that to do what's called a traversability analysis to figure out what areas are traversable for a robot, what obstacles to avoid and which pathways to follow. So I think the primary innovation that our system provides is the ability for a fleet of robots to be managed by one person. And the key development that we've created is that the robots are autonomous but as a team. They can collaborate and they can talk amongst themselves to um, individually allocate tasks between the fleet, which puts a lot less load on the operator. Two of the really unique capabilities that our navigation stack has is our ability to navigate around negative obstacles. And then the other one is our narrow gaps planner. So negative obstacles means you don't want the robot to go off steep drop-offs or ledges. And then the second point is the narrow gaps plan. If you want to go through a really narrow passage with just centimeters tolerance, you do need to get really close to those obstacles. This has applicability in many different domains, whether it be mining, industrial inspection, biosecurity, agriculture, and even defense. So these sort of application areas require scaling up of robot fleets uh, that can be deployed where you wouldn't necessarily want a lot of humans. Once we deploy the robots, we can have them running on the field for as long as the batteries last on these robots, where we don't necessarily have to intervene. That actually is a big step change in what's available out there. That had given us a level of confidence where once the robots are deployed, we can use them as a tool rather than worry about what the robots are doing. So we've come to a point where we can truly use fleets of robots as tools to address applications. These sort of systems have been developed in you know much smaller scale than what we have done recently. I think our system is the most mature system of a multi-agent robot fleet being operated by minimal crew to do the sort of things we do in an autonomous manner. And this is Australian technology that is world class. There are very few other systems around the world that can do what our system can do at the maturity level that our system is. And we are really keen to get this in the hands of Australian industry so that they can achieve great things using our technology.